Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs. Dr. Contrast live here. It's uh, good to be back on board. And uh, just before I begin here, uh, Victoria, it's great to have you on board. Hope you're doing well and uh, neat stuff that you're going to be hanging on to today. And uh, I thought I'd just kind of bring back to our remembrance. Uh, last Thursday, we did a series of things just putting together circles in perspective and how the mechanics of that began to work. And I thought, you know, the more we got into that system of thinking about generating, generating round surfaces and getting into circles and how they function, we began to go back in today and show you some of an application of that from a transportation perspective. Now, uh, don't misunderstand. I think the, the whole concept of getting into circles and how they're constructed and how they're done properly, you can literally use them in any given discipline, architecture, landscape design, product design, uh, illustration. It's it's endless. But I think I see an awful lot of things as I travel the country to new workshops, uh, for example, that uh, where you get into systems where the circles or the, the concept of getting around forms become extremely distorted and it's tough for young people to get out of that habit. And even with staffs, I mean, and, uh, I've, I've done with, I worked with a lot of technical staffs across the country, and they have the same difficulty. Uh, they've been told they're ellipses, and they're not ellipses, and upset about that. So I thought just all that to say that I think that little process of last Thursday was a good operation. I got a lot of good feedback on the mechanics of that operation. And also, I just felt, well, today, let's go back and look at an application here. So rather than get into a drawing cycle here, I'll do that a little bit near the end of the program. I thought I'd just bring in some instances here. Um, for some of the work I've done for a lot of variety of client bases and some transportation design. And what you'll see here is a variety of ballpoint pen, uh, Prismacolor pencil, some watercolors, and marker pastel. It's all over the place. But the one thing I want to really focus in on here for all of you who are tuning in, uh, Victoria, thank you, is this. Uh, there's a lot of collapse when you work with circles and perspective, especially in transportation design. Let me clarify what I mean by collapse. Look at this, for example. Look at how this front wheel and this particular three-quarter front is extremely open. As you move back, look how that whole thing collapses. It narrows down. And I think that's the big mistake we make an awful lot uh, when we begin to illustrate these things, especially in transportation design. We have a habit of saying, okay, this is a full maybe 60. That should be a full 60, but not the case. As you go back in perspective, that whole landscape begins to diminish, and it puts believability to it. Your, your station point remains the same, but as you move back, the whole thing starts to twist on you a little bit, so that's what keeps us in proper perspective. And the same with this front three-quarter here. Look how, look how open this guy is up front, and as you go back in space, how we diminish that, that, that far side circle to make it really function here. So uh, let's go through this whole portfolio here. And I'll just kind of walk right on our way through it and, and, and point out some interesting things in it that might be of some interest to you. So um, here's a little thumbnail study, some of the early concept sketches for the C8 Corvette uh, done uh, just um, oh, some time ago. Um, I can't recall what date it was. We've been on that program for the last, uh, what, 30 some odd years trying to get a midship on the marketplace, but we finally did. But these are some of the early concept sketches trying to break away from the paradigm of Corvette with the very lumpy fenders and you know, a little more sheer and more European with the design format. So uh, Paul Boyd pen sketches. Here's some a rear three-quarter study. Let me move this out of the way there so we can kind of see where we are there. There we go. I think that'll work. Um, rear three-quarter study, getting a little more, a more uh, um, adventuresome with some of the rear tail box graphics, lower upper, and a little bit of a more side view where we really crank the belt line up into a real high hip in the rear three-quarter. Some elevation studies here, getting into some, some scoop details. Coming pretty close in this guy right here, where all of a sudden you begin to see a little bit of the generation of that, that whole form of the side intake piece coming together. Some very sheer, a little bit too sedan-like here, obviously. But again, notice the roundness of, again, just look at an example here. Look at this sketch. Again, talking about this whole idea of collapse. Look how full this guy is. As you move away from it, look how thin that gets. That's the whole idea of how circles should work to maintain the accuracy in your perspective sketches. Now, uh, does that mean, for example, that would be perfect? No, but is the, the character should be such that we understand closest to me, it opens up. As it moves back, it diminishes. So let's go back and look at this sketch here. We're going to do a series of them. Some little color studies, again, get a little more organic with the thing, uh, a little more flamboyant with some of the graphics, for example. Uh, some very round nacelles. Again, side elevations. Again, a rear three-quarter. Trying to get graphic with it and uh, putting some color system into it. It just didn't really seem to fit the bill. But the idea, again, of getting this whole process down, of beginning to see how this system works. Older, narrower as you go back. And again, that the most important thing about that aspect of getting into the idea of how to understand how perspectives do. I just checked out a car at Show Less We Have. Ah, cool. What do you think? Did you, did you like it? Neat machine. Um, <clears throat> What's interesting about this whole process of getting circles properly is if you really go in, if you go down and look at these guys very, very carefully, that whole process, as Sid Mead once said, once you plant the wheels and do that correctly, everything else falls into place because it sets the proportion for the sketches up. So here we go. Let's go to another one here. 
some little three quarter studies here, a little overhead engine to intake, getting a little bit more dramatic now, out of 488 system on Pista, where we actually kind of pulled back some of the things and looked at it. And I got a little front three quarter. And here's a good example again of how that whole wheel system works. Look how full that guy is. We move back, it almost diminishes. Really solid stuff to work with here. Now, these are not the greatest sketches, don't misunderstand, but they're hopefully, hopefully bringing to glorify or accentuate the idea of how circles work and why they set the format for proportion, scale, character, etc. in our sketches. Um, rear three quarter study, slowing this guy down a little bit here and getting a little more of that, that uh, some some strakes and some uh, some tunnel effects and, and aerodynamic systems underneath the chassis and so forth. A little rear three quarter study, a little more dramatic. Then going back, and I'll just change of pace here, doing some aircraft work. Uh, again, it's transportation design, so this is a transportation system. This is some drone work done for the United States Air Force, just some thumbnail sketches and uh, looking at uh, different geometric, almost stealth like processes and getting some stealth work done for drones. Again, not a lot of circles here, but again, the whole idea of perspective uh, part of the process as well. So there's a variety in this portfolio. So it's not all cars, but now back to Corvette. Again, look at how this changes, for example. Again, fuller, diminished, fuller, diminished. I mean, really exaggerate. This has turned just a bit, but it gives you the presence of the character. Uh, I was gonna say, it looked like a Stella Global. Yeah, I mean, this, this one back here. This one back here, uh, Arctura, this guy here, this, this page. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's an awful lot of, uh, I just, I'm intrigued by aircraft design, and I've always gotten into it sometimes. I don't, maybe I should do a stream on just aircraft uh, illustration workers. I've done one before in the F-35 Lightning, but I want to go back to that and maybe do some inter interesting things as well, along with that basic theme. So there it is. Uh, yeah, I think that's what you're referring to here. So I'll just move along, move along as we go here. Uh, Corvette, we've already reviewed here. There's another page of studies uh, of, of getting circles to work for us or proportion and setting the scale of the scale and the like. Here's a little overhead three-quarter front of what that process moved this out of the stream in the yard. A little overhead three-quarter perspective sketch. Not a lot of wheel graphics here, but again, perspective is really interesting how it all begins to link together and how it all begins to put the pieces together. You don't see tires here, but that tire is there. And if that width is correct, everything else is going to fall into place nicely. Let's move this over just a bit. This is a line study done for um, Audi Motorsports, the IMP car. Um, I just started to do this, and I think I'll begin to finish it up here in the next uh, couple of days or so. But uh, just looking at some different surface work. And again, same process in the tires. A lot tighter, a lot uh, I mean, a further open, much tighter as you go back. Let's go back into this guy. Here's some thumbnail studies for a little two-place machine we did for a company here um, in Chicago. They're looking for a little inner, inner city commuter car. Uh, very interesting little thumbnail sketches and how it all begins to put together. Um, so I just started out with a series of little sketches like this, just some soldier studies and getting some format down. A little perspective study here to kind of kind of twist it a little bit. So we can again with this one. So you can see what the actual format is doing. Very low profile, very interesting, very interesting concept in terms of a two-seater piece, open cockpit in some areas, in terms of some of the close canopy, obviously. Um, but just again, putting the drama together, or really putting together pieces with circles and how they all begin to function, get the proportion together. A little study here, again, rear three quarter, how that whole upper piece rolls down into, a, into a, 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 an arrow fin in the cockpit area, and a little uh, support start, strut to take you through the machine into the front wheels. And we'll move along here very quickly. There's a little overhead three quarter study of uh, just some, some fender graphics and that, what that might look like when it all comes together. Uh, again, notice again, very full. Turn just a little bit, give it some character. But again, fullness diminished. As you go back, the count begins to diminish. And I'll show you that in a few moments in a sketch rendering form. I'll just do a real quick little study for you. So, uh, again, a little pencil sketch here of uh, front three quarter and an elevation. Again, notice very full and then again, very minimal as you go back. And this is a pencil sketch, a prism colored pencil. Real fast, lucid, little maybe three to four minute sketch. So you got to put an idea down, uh, working with circles. Um, again, a rear three quarter, a little front elevation, and again, a little rear three quarter of the sketch and how that begins to function. Um, and so far, uh, it's really been unique in terms of once once that wheel pattern is set, it's amazing to me how you begin to use that as a, as a dictation for widths, for heights, and, all, and you can cheat that proportion as well, which I think is really neat about understanding the system. And let me clarify that. I really don't fully understand it. I work with it, but what I've learned from it is to be able to use those wheel systems and wheel plants to begin to change proportion, stretch it, minimize it, uh, increase the height, decrease the height, add the width, reduce the width. It all becomes part of the formula. Um, and again, for success, a little, uh, little pencil sketch here of, of some Ferrari work early on. Uh, <clears throat> 
Crimea. La Ferrari, we actually come in the big floating fender, and again, back into the, the, the uh, sill system, back into the tail section, and a lot of drama changes in this car when it came to uh, came to press uh, from a manufacturer point of view and hit the marketplace. Um, little study of an MG, uh, every now and then I go back in the history of things and do an old machine, a little rendering study here, of pastel marker um, of an old MG, MGB. Uh, interesting little process in the house in the background, just to kind of change pace a little bit. This was done for a whole series of things we did, that I did some years ago for the Indianapolis 500, uh, some of the great marquees of Indy. This was one of about 12 pieces I did for Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, again, same process where this is the old Miller system and the uh, Miller Motorsports. And again, wheels open up and minimize it. And a little bit of the, the grandstands in the background to give it some character. So that was that part of that process. Uh, another little Indy car piece that was done, for example, this is uh, the Indy 500 winner of 1928, and it was a fantastic streamliner. It's a Stutz Bearcat, you don't, uh, Blackout, pardon me. You don't see an awful lot of that or hear an awful lot about this car, but it was a very unique, almost a steamer, almost uh, harkened back to the days of the Mercedes-Benz streamliners and the Audi Motorsports and the Bluebirds categories um, back in the 30s and 40s. So we brought it all back in the 1928, uh, pardon me, I take it all back. This was part of that same generation of, of, of racing machines. You know, just progressed into the 30s and 40s into Bluebirds, but that was an actual IndyCar uh, competitor. It, had, it set the speed record too, uh, for understand, of 203 miles an hour um, in a throttle run in 1928. So a pretty powerful little machine. Um, this is the obvious one here. This is a series of studies I did for Maserati some time ago. Uh, the birdcage Maserati, a very simple little sketch here, uh, just an elevation. And that was Sterling Moss driving the, uh, the, uh, the birdcage. And I believe in this case, I think it was at uh, the Nürburgring in Germany. Uh, that was a little illustration piece done. This is a photocopy of the actual piece. The actual piece was rather large. So um, th this is just a study of, in, the, of, uh, of, in the portfolio to kind of put that into some position. But back into the little ballpoint pen sketches, back to Corvette studies here again. Notice some of the early generation where we try to keep the same flavor of the Corvette with the, uh, you know, the, the actual fender blisters coming back into a little nacelle on the body side. Pretty timid looking approach, I thought, for the C8 as we see it today. But it started there with a very simple set of melodramatic, um, anti-dramatic pieces of let's keep the character and all of a sudden it opened up and then we've got to be much more competitive and it end up, ended up with the C8 we see today. Uh, rear three-quarter study, obviously, same kind of system. Trying to get a little more Ferrari into it and uh, maybe not as organic as the actual machine. The, uh, the actually C8 now that's out on the marketplace. And my preference would have been, um, when it was all said and done, uh, I would love to have seen more of a rounder tail lamp section going back from the heart of the, the C6 series and uh, so on. But um, uh, too late to do that. There was a time for a change. And um, um, that's what took place. We were more of the actual almost Lamborghini type uh, uh, horizontals as opposed to the rounds uh, uh, that uh, really dictated the Corvette's history as a mimic of Ferrari back in the 50s and 60s. So there we are, a little ballpark pen sketches. These are some transportation studies I, I have done for a uh, ski mobile firm up in, uh, for, uh, Oh, gee, what is it? Up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, Skidoo. It was an interesting little series of sketches. They came to me and wanted some conceptual work on some future thinker and snowmobiles. So we did a series of sketches. And the reason I brought this in, uh, for example, look at the gauge package here. Again, same process of circles, but how they begin to dictate what the perspective does. And if you were to put drive lines through this thing, you'd see the, the, that be your center line, perspective drive line, perspective drive line, and it all works together. So I thought this was a good little piece too to show you what this with this whole idea of like going back to last Thursday's explanation on the mechanics of the process of circles. And then today's stream about how to apply it into product design. A little front three quarter study for the same process. Uh, very interesting set of outriggers and a, a floating canard system. Uh, pontoon fenders and this little, this little paddle piece to kind of stabilize it in the snow. Another little sketcher of it, uh, concept work. Uh, another little piece of work for MG again, um, just a little, little uh, study of value, looking at the possibilities of, of, of just uh, what, what shape does and what color will do. And again, again the tire, the, the concept of tires. Very round, and almost round, but just a little bit more, just a little narrower as you go back in perspective. This was done for Bentley. Uh, this is the uh, Speed, the uh, X, uh, EXP Super 8 at uh, Le Mans. Uh, won three times, um, a terrific, 24 Le Mans. Just a brute of a machine. And again, you know, can't see the wheels here, but those tires set up the perspective in terms of how to get the width down, how to get the height down, and how to get the length down, so it foreshortened it all. It all became, yeah, hey, how you doing there? Nice stuff. 
Uh, nice color work. Oh, thank you very much. It's interesting how it all begins to kind of play together. Let me move that light out of the way. Let's get this down just a bit. Is that going to be okay? There you are. There you go. Um, so Bentley, a uh, piece for Bentley. Turning the page again. This was done for Chrysler Corporation, a little uh, two-place coupe all up, off the Viper platform, but it uh, never saw the light of day in this, in this case here. But again, a little ballpoint pen sketch, a, bit of, a little bit of pastel wash. And again, looking at the system of working with wheels and how round surfaces and circles begin to influence what we see here. And again, this was done over here. We were approached by the uh, Honda Group, uh, Acura, out of Europe, to look at uh, next generation, some Acura um, two-place uh, motorsports, which became the NSX. Uh, this is some of the early concept sketches uh, for that, that platform. Notice the intakes up on top out of Formula One. Um, interesting approach to it, the twins, one on each side. Um, that started the whole process moving for the whole process in that area and for a category in that manufacturing system. These are little pencil sketches done for Audi. Uh, these were done for the 8 Series, Audi 8 Series. Um, big sedan, a little pencil sketch, and then again the transfer and a little bit of marker, a little bit of color to work with there to kind of put the drama into this thing. Really gutty looking approaches to it, and uh, that was a dictation from Audi. A little less of the, the um, crate grill, a little bit of the rounds in it and so forth. It gave us a little bit more of a meaty looking intake piece, uh, meaner looking headlamps, and a more aggressive front end. So that was again, notice again, the wheels, uh, come back to that. Very tight, but again, a little tighter. It's not much, but it's there to give the right uh, sense of perspective and scale when you move into the sketch itself. There's another page here. Another variation, turning it around. A little softer in the upper. But again, notice, even though there's a, little, there's a very minimal amount of distance between the span here, there to there, it's much, a little bit wider, but much narrower. And a little bit of a different approach here in this guy, where you actually a little more voluptuous in the front end system, less, less mechanical, less lethal, and into more of this approach, where you actually open it up a little more. This came very close to some of the early studies that we did uh, for the, um, for the uh, Audi 8 series, uh, when it was um, becoming part of the platform for facelift change in the marketplace. Let's turn the page here a little bit and go through the process. These are a couple of pieces done for um, some advertising for a firm here in town. Every now and then I get some, some information to do some Christmas cards. I don't know what they're in this place for, but again, there's a big circular in the train system. That was interesting, a little uh, sketch rendering piece. Um, uh, Matt Lutlino always comes to me maybe about every year and wants me to do a Christmas card of some sort of transportation system or manufacturing system. So I just kind of opened it again. Little machines in here that had rounds in it was not really as prominent as some of the things we're talking about here uh, in terms of circles. Uh, even in the idea of getting a perspective, for example, for interior design, much more um, um, difficult in terms of keeping the perspective correct, getting the circles right, or even the surfaces in the, in the, eye, in the history pod, and then the gauges, AC system, and again, notice the wheels, much fuller, much more minimalized. This is an early study for C7, I believe, at that time, we would change over from the 6 series, a little more drag, and kept some of the same character of the 6, we brought it into the 7, and as far as I'm concerned, I thought the 7 was a much more aggressive approach than what we ended up here. Um, so, but again, again, it's a simple ballpoint pen marker and, uh, and pastel sketch, to, uh, it's gonna get a mood down. This was done for Elf, uh, uh, Sir Jackie Stewart in the uh, Elf uh, uh, four-wheeler. Um, interesting little composition. Again, notice a lot of activity, but still that same process coming together here with the wheels being extremely minimal and just missing the rear tire as a part of the illustration. But uh, again, that was, uh, that was a portion that was taken taking place in these little studies. And this one is, um, this is Rene Dreyfus in the uh, Bugatti Type 35 in the hill climb. Again, notice, again, notice, I really kind of turned the wheel a little bit here, but it's real minimal. And if I could finish the last tire, it opens up just a bit more. Um, and uh, fun stuff to do. This is done for the Bugatti. Uh, and uh, some time ago, it was the, uh, the hill climb series that uh, Rene Dreyfus was involved in, in that time period back in the 30s and 40s. Um, and this is a, an illustration done for um, Alice Zanardi when he was with the Target Motorsports. When I was doing an awful lot of work with IndyCar, um, they came to us, uh, Ganassi's group came to us and wanted to do a commemorative piece for Alex. So I put together this little composition. This, uh, again, is a very small variation of the final sketch. The final sketch was huge. It was about maybe 24 by 40. It's a large piece uh, done for Zanardi uh, when he won the Indy 500. And unfortunately, it went on some demise here with that uh, tragic accident in Germany. And also the recent one, uh, that head injury he received just very recently in Europe uh, when he was driving BMW closed wheel systems. 
So again, notice, same process with tires. I mean, the whole idea for the stream is to really put the process together with what we did on Thursday, which was the mechanics of it all, and then today the aesthetics of it all, putting in the whole context of what transportation design, how to work with those tires and wheels in circles to get the proportions correct as we go through the whole part of the lineup here. A um, little study for Porsche 911, ballpoint pen sketch. Let's put this all together here like that. We're in good shape, there it is. Little front, uh, front and rear three quarter on um, the 911S, um, the Targa version with a real gutty intake and so forth. Just a nice little pen study. And then I finished out a color piece that went to them. Uh, I don't have the record of the color piece. I don't have time to get, uh, have it recorded, but that was part of it all. This was done for uh, Marlboro Motorsports, um, for Honda at the time. And um, also, uh, this is um, Ayrton Senna. In the um, in the MP4 uh, uh, Honda, nice machine, little little thumbnail sketch, front three quarter, no real tire drama there, just a neat piece to add to it. And I think we're in here, yeah, this is done for a Lamborghini uh, Aventador. Um, again, same process, with again, even though they're pretty compatible front to rear, there's still a little bit of change in the pinch there. And then coming back in with this, looking at a very full tire and a very minimized tire. But again, that I can't I cannot stress enough how important this understanding how that process works. Because what it does for you is the following. If the wheels are planted properly, I'll Sid me, never forget him telling us this. If the wheels are planted properly, that sets the mood and the tone for proportion, width, height, overall length, and character of the car you're trying to deal with. And it's so true. If you miss something, for example, in the tired proportions, man, it just is an absolute killer. Uh, it just destroys the perspective. And the drama of the, the sketch is gone, the character's lost. So it's a very careful set of circumstances. <clears throat> Pardon me. What I mean by careful is not being cautious. Careful in the sense of knowing where the proportions are and how to set it all up makes an enormous difference. And uh, boy, uh, over the years, a tremendous and invaluable lesson in terms of putting together the right circles in perspective for transportation design, which is this stream is all about. Last but not least, we've seen that Bentley piece again here, seeing that Stewart piece. This is a little, little studied in contour and section work that was done for Honda, uh, for a motorsports piece, off-road vehicle. We did this a little bit uh, for them, and uh, just to show them what the surfaces look like, and again, again, with circles. How they begin to look at that cup holder container, uh, variation one, with another variation here, how it channels itself back out into the actual injected molded part. And again, serves a little conical piece that comes back and changes the section, and how those circles influence what the dies are going to look like, and how to, uh, how to begin to look at that from an engineering perspective to manufacture the part. And then, last but not least, another little study here with the, let me move this over. Uh, again, same set of circumstances. How to get those circles to work with the IP system for this off-road vehicle, this four-wheeler that Honda was doing, to kind of show with a cup container how it would nestle into the forms itself. And notice we revised some of the shapes around the, the, the IP surface to accommodate what the cup holder was doing in circles. And that's another great aspect about having good dynamic circles to work with. You can change and alter the shape of forms by understanding how those surfaces work, which is again, part of the process here. So let's do this, uh, I'm gonna wrap that up now. I just wanna switch gears here for a moment. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I just finished this up uh, last week, uh, last week. Hey, Desperado 04, how you doing? Follow, thank you very much, Desperado. Where are you from? <clears throat> Where about you from, Desperado? Just hold on for a minute here. What do you think, uh, Victoria? Is this making sense for you so far? Coming along okay? Very cool. Um, boy, I really appreciate that, Desperado. Thank you very much for joining forces. They're, they're great. Uh, first time chat, Desperado 004. Hello there. How are you? Um, I hope you picked up the majority of the stream. If not, I'll do some review, uh, review work for you. But uh, uh, thank you so much. I'm Turkish. Oh, thank you very much. Are you coming from Turkey? Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining forces here. Great to have you on board. If you have any questions as, as I go through this, feel free to answer them or uh, ask them. I'd be glad to help if I can. Um, but uh, we're just kind of wrapping some things up on I'm a good, how about you? I'm doing very well, thank you. But I'm really excited about the fact that you are on board with us. And thank you so much, uh, um, Desperado 004. Very cool. That's a real thrill for me to have, to have a conversation with someone in Turkey. So thank you. Um, last but not least, let's go back to this guy for a minute. This is another example. This is a watercolor study of uh, Juan Manuel Fangio piloting the BRM V16 at, um, in the Formula Libra race in 1953 at Silverstone, England. And I brought this up, <clears throat> not for the benefit of being a watercolor, but again, I wanted you to notice, you can convey and cheat perspective a little bit in the tires by the way you handle certain things. For example, notice the wheel, rear wheel very full, but the front's pinched just a little bit, just to kind of show a little bit of speed that's under some pressure. 
those are little tricks that come along, for example, once you begin to work with this stuff over a period of time, you begin to advance the cause about how to convey speed, how to develop a more of a character in the sketch. Um, this is a very, uh, normally when I do watercolor, it's a much more lucid, uh, much freer. Um, I've done both uh, both sides of the fence, so to speak. I've also done lucid watercolor work and very tight watercolor work. But it really is interesting that, that this one, I got a little bit tighter with it because I want to really convey a little bit more speed with that little squeeze in the front tire as opposed to the rear tire. Um, this took about maybe um, from start to finish and just a wash in the line drawing. Um, and the sketch was already there real lightly. And I, I kind of laid it in the watercolor from start to finish about maybe 30 to 45 minutes to get the thought in and just laying down some tape and washing in the ground plane. So, um, but I thought it was interesting to bring this along as a finish piece to tell you that things do not change whether you go lucid or tight. It's that same concept of getting those circles to correct it and doing it properly. It makes a huge difference. So let me stop right there and, and we'll, come, we'll come back to that in a moment. But I thought we'd wrap it up by doing this too. Let's just kind of take a second here <clears throat> and begin to show you what this whole principle looks like when you do a little rapid sketch. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a really fast little marker sketch here and show you how hopefully this whole process begins to function with this tire geometry, <clears throat> pardon me, these circles. So let's start here. Let's put a little bit of ground line down. Let's chase it back, minimize it. Let's open it up. Let me stop there just for a moment. Look how we're setting up, for example. <clears throat> I'm good, how about you? I'm doing well. I think how we're setting up here, for example, the whole concept of getting this whole idea to work with us in terms of how to generate the circle properly and then going again, full force up front and then minimizing as we go back. How to draw through this thing. In fact, if I took pencil, look what happens here. If I draw through this thing and get that scale to work with us, look at this, one, two, three, and it minimizes as it, and it results it minimizes as it goes back that's the thing that i really want to stress in the stream today about how that operates let's go let me finish this up for you and not bore you to death center line the center line
this was the marker simple little sketch As those of you who followed me before I, I firmly believe that a marker is nothing more than a wet pencil that's all it really truly is and when you work with it very quickly and make decisions with it it's just an amazing thing to go and to work with here so let's do this and i'm just going to wrap it up by doing this i'll come back in if you want to tighten down some things on this guy come back in with a drawing I mean, I just put paper here. And we'll take a little bit of a shot here and just get this guy up, up to speed and put a little bit of backdrop in it, a little bit of high contrast. out of the way here there we are <clears throat> almost there gang thank you turn this aside a little more of that, that wheel kind of kind of tune into there for us very cool Last but not least, I'm going to just hang on a second here. A little bit of tone to it here. A little finishing touch really helps to do the following. You come back in with something like this. You just kind of touch this in just a bit. Blend it in. Come back in. Blend it in.
blend it in, blend it in, and blend it in. And there's a real quick little study. It's in value. Put a little bit of shot together. There it is. There's a quick little study here, guys, on how the whole process begins to function once you get into the system of working with circle perspective, how you begin to understand, for example, how this guy works. You open it up, then you close it down, and you come back in and just start to really crank on some neat stuff in terms of drawing systems. And that does it for today, gang. I think a really nice job in terms of putting together a very simple application here from all the materials we did, for example, in the sketchbook and what that really meant um, based on last week's uh, stream. Um, again, on Thursday, we worked with the mechanics of how these circles work. And today, we just kind of kind of back and just opened up the, the, the book a little bit. So this is how it begins to function in, the, in my sketchbook or the portfolio piece. And um, hopefully, this has been some help to you. <clears throat> and again, uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, Desperado 04, I really appreciate you joining forces with me today here. Great to have you on board. That makes sense for everybody, Victoria? Uh, good. Are you guys good? <clears throat> Pardon me here. You, good job. No, that's not easy at all, uh, um, Esperado. You, you, you've, gone, you've gone through this. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of practice time. But, but I'm really glad that you're joining um, forces with me here today. We'll kind of pick up on some pieces on Thursday with some additional things um, from the drawing side of life and uh, and begin to hopefully work you through the process and, and really have fun with it. So, um, <clears throat> oh, pardon me, I'm losing my voice here. <clears throat> that's better. <clears throat> Um, so we'll get to the place where all of a sudden this thing will become automatic. But I just felt today it was really a good way to kind of pull back a little bit from some of the things we've done in the past, especially on Thursday of last week, where it was much more mechanical. This is much more aesthetic. And I just kind of walked us through some things. But the whole purpose of the stream is to understand how circles work and then how they begin to function at it, especially in transportation design. So for future references, I will be doing things like uh, landscape design, architectural work, product design work. I just started with the transportation because it seems to be the one where most people have the most difficulty with in terms of putting it all together so it was a good way to kind of put that piece together wrap it up with a little bit of theory last week and then the facts of uh, of being truthful and much more uh, <clears throat> for lack of a better term much more aesthetic with this stuff today so hope you have a great uh, shot at it if you have any questions or, con or concerns um desperado 04 or victoria please feel free to drop me a note at my website at jim at drcontrast.com um at desperado 04 if you're looking at some very interesting uh, for, uh to uh, maybe help you with some drawing systems on my website at drcontrast.com all lowercase uh, you'll find a nine uh, program drawing uh, section there that hopefully will be of some help to you um, and uh, let me know what you think and drop me a note on, on my as i said on my email at uh, jim at, uh, at uh, drcontrast.com i would love to continue my following so if you know of individuals who have an interest in doing this and want to uh, pass the word love to have you have them join me thank you so much again for your time today gang um, and again desperate look at my website uh, I'm, I'm on my website you'll find my twitch series my youtube series and my instagram series and addition to what we're doing here so thank you very much gang and hope you have a great day take care of yourself and uh, i always close with this because i think it's extremely critical to do so and it's probably the most important in the stream never forget to dare to be great because you are thanks very much gang all the best and take care thank you <clears throat>